ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار brothers and sisters in islam since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his grace and by his mercy saved this immediate area from the hurricane it seemed appropriate and befitting that we give a khutbah about the wind and how it is used by Allah azza wa jal to bring punishment or to bring good to people and also because our attitude towards wind has changed and the phenomenon of hurricanes and powerful winds have changed a lot from those of the righteous before us. Aisha radiallahu anha, she described that whenever strong winds blew, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam fazi'a wa taghayyara wajhu. He became frightened visibly and, the, and his face changed and he went home today people know of strong winds coming or even devastating hurricanes coming and their preparation besides the food and drink which are necessary but their preparation also is to download their favorite show and to make sure all the electronics are fully charged so they have some way to pass the time when this is happening or those who want to go out and have some sort of adventure in the strong winds or the most extreme are what are known as storm chasers. But why is it that the Prophet ﷺ reacted in this way? And that was the exact question of Aisha radiallahu anha. She tells him that when people see winds, they rejoice that it's going to bring rain. Yet I see you change in this way. So the Prophet ﷺ tells her, Ya Aisha, wa ya wa ma yu'minuni. وَمَا يُؤْمِنُنِي And what will make me know, feel safe أَنْ يَكُونَ فِيهَا عَذَابٌ That there is not punishment coming in this strong wind. فَلَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْ قَوْمٍ Indeed Allah has said meaning in the Qur'an about a certain people فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهُ عَارِضًا مُسْتَقْبِلَ أَوْدِيَتِهِمْ قَالُوا هَذَا عَارِضٌ مُمْطِرُنَا بَلْ هُوَ مَسْتَعْجَلْتُمْ بِهِ Rihun fiha adabun alim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing here in the Quran these people, and the Prophet mentioned this verse where when they saw the clouds coming, they were pleased, thinking that it's coming to rain upon their valleys and rain upon their lands. So they were pleased, thinking this is coming, bringing good with it. And that's what most people expect that good is going to come. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ هُوَ مَسْتَعْجَلْتُمْ بِهِ It is what you were rushing for, what you were asking your Prophet to bring you of punishment. Rihun, a wind, fiha adabun alim. In it is a severe or painful torment. And Aisha described that whenever it rained, the Prophet ﷺ would be relieved and pleased. You find a similar description of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz radiallahu anhu, the 13th Khalifa. And whenever the winds blew, strong winds blew, he would become incredibly frightened and start making dua and dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal out of fear that a punishment is coming. But we also know from the hadith that not all wind is just a bad or not all wind is bad, strong winds. We know this from a hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. An Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Nusirtu bi, bi he says, Nusurtu bisaba wa uhlikat adun biddabur. So he says, and the Arabs they used to name the winds. So the wind that comes from the east, 
or, or the west, they called it Al-Dabur. The one that came from the south, they called it Al-Aizab. And the one that came from the east, they called it Al-Saba. So the Prophet ﷺ says, I have been given victory through the eastern wind. And Ad was destroyed by the western wind. So we see in one hadith, good and bad coming out of it. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ would make dua, asking for the good of it. In this hadith, the Nabi ﷺ said, لا تسبوا الريح Do not curse the winds. فإذا رأيتم ما تكرهون وفي رواية أحمد فإذا رأيتم منها ما تكرهون If you see from it that which you dislike فقولوا اللهم إنا نسألك خير من خيره من خير هذه الريح So you say, O oh Allah, we ask you from the good of this wind. وَخَيْرِ مَا فِيهَا And the good of what's in it. وَخَيْرِ مَا أُمِرَتْ بِهِ And the good of what it's commanded with. وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّ هَذِهِ الْرِيحِ And we seek refuge in you from the evil of this wind. وَشَرِّ مَا فِيهَا And the evil of, of what's in it. وَشَرِّ مَا أُمِرَتْ بِهِ And the evil of what it is commanded with. Ibn Umar رضي الله عنه or عنهما he describes Kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إِذَا رَأَ الْرِيحِ in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whenever he saw the winds he would say Allahumma la taqtunna bi ghadabik Oh Allah do not terminate us because of your wrath your anger wala tuhlikna bi adhabik and do not destroy us with your punishment wa'afina qabla dhalik and famously the dua of strong winds Allahumma inni as'aluka khayraha wa khayra ma fiha wa khayra ma ursilat bih وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّهَا وَشَرِّ مَا فِيهَا وَشَرِّ مَا أُرْسِلَتْ بِهِ We know from the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the people, dis- destroyed the people of Ad with powerful winds. In Surah Al-Dhariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي عَادٍ إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ الْرِيحَ الْعَقِيمِ And Ad, when we sent them the barren winds, why did Allah Azza wa Jalla describe the winds being aqim here, the wind singular being barren? And the scholars say it means that it has no benefit in it because wind brings rain with it, there's benefit. Or it brings just cool air with it and there's benefit. Or it causes pollination of, of flowers and plants and there's benefit. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described this wind as barren, meaning it comes with no good whatsoever. Whereas in Surah Al-Hijr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَرْسَلْنَا الْرِيَاحَ لَوَاقِحْ مِنَ التلقيح. And we sent the winds, plural now, for pollination. Mentioning some of the benefit that comes with the winds. Another thing that we see that's interesting in these two verses is that in the Qur'an, when the wind brings punishment with it, it is always a rih, singular. But when Allah mentions the benefits coming with wind, it is always in the plural form. And this, or we get look at examples in Surah An-Naml. وَمَنْ يُرْسِلُ الرِّيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِهِ Riyah and Bushr here for rejoicing. Plural, because good comes with it. The scholars explain that when wind comes from, is in the singular form, or because it's coming from one direction, it's one wind, it is more destructive. And that's exactly what the weather experts say today. And these are actually known as straight line winds and they're also called damaging winds. These are two names for that. And 50% of all severe reports are usually from straight line winds. And they cause damage on a much larger, this, this, uh, on a much larger scale, even more so than tornadoes that attack or come into a localized area. Sulaiman also had a rih because it ha- it's directional and it also would carry things and it could defeat his enemy. That's why it's referred to as a rih. In the Quran, Allah describes the wind that moves the ships as a rih also because it's singular going in one direction. As for Ad, they were destroyed with a wind, and again, it's singular. Sarsarin, it, the scholars, the majority of the Mufassirin said it's cold wind, atiya, very strong, powerful wind. So we learn from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first thing when there's strong winds is that we make dua. 
We make dua in order to avoid whatever harm it can cause or whatever harm comes with it. And we get whatever good or benefit that may come with it. When it rained heavily one time in Mecca and the roads were cut off and the animals, some animals drowned, the Prophet ﷺ made a dua. Allahumma hawalayna wa la alayna. O Allah, around us and not upon us. Meaning let it fall around us but not on us. Allahumma ala al-akam wa dhirab wa butoon al-awdiyah wa manabit al-ashjar. He says, O Allah, let it to fall on the plateaus and on the mountains and hills and in the valleys and in the places where the trees grow. So the first thing, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing, it's a reminder of the punishment. It's a reminder of the punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed nations before using nothing but wind. And so we spend our time in dhikr and we spend our time in istighfar, not in binge watching and not just completely watching the news without making any dua to Allah Azza wa Jal or making any istighfar. And then the third thing it reminds us of the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tornado or not, it is fast moving air. That's what it is. It's air that's moving quickly. And the most powerful nations will know and see it in their radars that it's coming. And they have no power and nothing to do, but they sit and wait for it to make landfall. It's just fast moving air. And the most powerful nations will be destroyed by it. Meaning, they cannot do anything to stop it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed, as we mentioned multiple times, the people of Ad. And these people, they were strong militarily. They were strong economically. Allah mentions how they will just build homes ta'bathun just for, for for fun they would build these incredible homes and they were strong their homes were strong because they were carved into the rock and they were strong physically as allah azawajal says wazadakum fil khalqi basta and allah increased you in stature so they were so strong yet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them with wind and namrud was such a powerful king allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped him with a tiny creature, one mosquito that destroyed his life. Ya'juj and Ma'juj, who are great in number and in power, and they will come out and kill everyone that they can find on earth. How does Allah Azza wa destroy them? With a naghaf, which is just a small worm-like insect that will kill them all. This is a reminder of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum min jami' al فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness indeed those who ask for his forgiveness shall prosper Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulihi al-ameen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma ba'd so in this second khutbah is a reminder that tomorrow is the day of Ashura. And the hadith mentions that when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to Medina, he found the Jews of Medina fasting on this day. He asked about it and he was told this is a day where Allah saved Musa and his followers and Bani Israel from Fir'aun. So the Prophet, so we're fasting to thank Allah Azza for that. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we have more rights to Musa than they do. And he had intended for the next year to fast a day before, just to be different, instead of just fast, fasting Ashura, to fast Tasu'a the day before, which is today, and the day of Ashura itself. So the scholars gave the options, they said you can fast the day of the ninth, which is today, and tomorrow. Ashura itself. If you did not wake up fasting today and you missed that opportunity, they said you can also fa fast the day itself and the day after it. And many mentioned that the best is to fast all three. So that would be this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if you are not fasting today on Friday, then fast tomorrow, Saturday, and then Sunday. The other thing is the Prophet ﷺ authentically mentioned that the fasting of Ashura expiates the sins of one year. 
the fast of Ashura expiates the sins of one year. With that, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who recognize the truth as clear truth and follow the best of it, and to make us of those who recognize falsehood as clear falsehood and abstain from it. فَاللَّهُمَّ أَرِنَ الْحَقَّ حَقًّا وَارْزُقْنَا اتِّبَاعَهُ وَأَرِنَا الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلًا وَارْزُقْنَا اجْتِنَابَهُ فَاللَّهُمَّ لَا تَجْعَلَ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ هَمِّنَا وَلَا مَبْلَغَ عِلْمِنَا وَلَا إِلَى النَّارِ مَصِيرَنَا فَاللَّهُمَّ أَبْرِمْ لِهَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ أَمْرَ رُشْدٍ يُعَزُّ فِيهِ أَهْلُ طَاعَتِكَ وَيُهْدَى فِيهِ أَهْلُ مَعْصِيَتِكَ وَيُؤْمَرْ فِيهِ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيُنْهَى فِيهِ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ يَا سَمِيعَ الدُّعَاءِ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant ease and recovery, financial and physical, to those who were afflicted by the hurricane. And we ask Allah azza wa jal to accept our fast today and this weekend. وصلى الله وبارك على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين وقوموا إلى صلاتكم ورحمكم الله